Thank you. No problem. Andre, hello. Um, it's been one of the most compelling features of the whole Premier League season, this race for the top four. Does it still have one or two twists and turns to go, do you think? Yeah, oh, oh, for us, hopefully. Uh, oh, yeah, I've told you in the past that the only thing that doesn't change is, um, is that we have to do our job in the remaining two fixtures. And, um, and wait, now it's time for somebody to, to slip up. So um, at the moment we um, we can only focus on, on on ourselves and try to get this um, the most amount of points as possible, and then uh, wait for something to happen for our rivals. What's it been like coping with the intensity of it all week in week out? Because there's been no let up at all all season, has there? Uh, yeah, I mean for us uh, in particular, I mean for for Chelsea probably they, they've they've played in many more games than any other team. Um, but we had, uh, you know, we had a good run with uh, with the Europa League uh, that finished earlier than we wanted. But uh, you know, we've kept our um, we kept our balance. Probably the results uh, uh, this time, a couple of draws have um, have put us on uh, on the back foot. Lost uh, a couple of points, managed to uh, to jump back to winning ways against uh, Man City. Southampton and um, and these uh, these two draws against Wigan and Chelsea in the last four games put us still in in the frame and with the possibility, obviously with a um, with different scenario than the one uh, before we faced Chelsea, but um, you know with the same uh, we still have to do our job against uh, Stoke and Sunderland to uh, to dream of that possibility. How much satisfaction <coughs> do you derive from those late goals in in the last three games that ha have earned you crucial points? Yeah, we have we, we've been getting it. I think the most um, the most uh, times it happens to us, you know, the more uh, likely it's going to happen again. I think you, we we are gaining on that confidence that we can solve it. Obviously, you don't want to leave it late. You want to um, gain that advantage early. But uh, it's been happening to us. Um, the players gain that extra confidence, and uh, I think our en energy levels were uh, were good and and, l and allow us to keep on pushing in the last minutes to to get the results we want. You've made some great strides this season. You've played some terrific stuff, and yet, if you don't make the top four, is the season considered a failure? Well, the the objective was to do uh, better than uh, than last season. I think every single club progresses in in that direction. Uh, you know, uh, a couple of clubs will uh, will get their objectives. Others uh, won't. It won't be uh, you know as different as any other season. Uh, our objective was to was to be in that frame, so we are still within that possibility. And then we just have to um, to judge on whatever happens. On the last day of the season, everybody plays at the same time. <coughs> but in this particular round, Chelsea play Saturday, you play Sunday, Arsenal play Tuesday. Yeah. Are there any advantages or, or disadvantages in there from your perspective? Well, I think y you know we um, we just have to to take it. We've we, we've played uh, before and after for us, uh, or for me in particular, it makes no no difference whatsoever. Uh, what I think is, uh, in Wigan's case, ever an FA Cup final, they can go to Arsenal with the motivation from uh, from winning an FA Cup, an historic FA Cup, but which will probably lead into celebrations. <laughs> so uh, difficult uh, as well. Uh, if they don't win, they will go with frustration, but probably focused on uh, on getting their most important objective, which is to uh, to stay in the Premier League. Uh, on the with with Chelsea with the Europa League final coming. And uh, a couple of um, days after our game, that was very, very intense. Uh, you know, they faced a difficult uh, trip that is always going to, to Villa Park, the last um, home game for Villa. And uh, and anything can I think anything can happen in in all of the fixtures. And now and we face a tough, tough game. As um, you know, although Stoke look uh, in a more comfortable position now with the draw after. Um, the game against Sunderland, they still, uh, you know, need a, a point to to be mathematically safe. <coughs> the fact that they still need a point to be mathematically safe, so presumably they will be on edge themselves, which is something you might be able to exploit. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's very, very unlikely that they would uh, go down with the amount of points that they have, and particularly with the fixtures that the others have to face. But uh, you know, the, I think uh, knowing uh, Tony Pulis, they have managed to gather um, a couple of results that have been important, particularly the the win at uh, QPR, uh, which gave them great confidence, and they will want to finish the season well uh, in front of their fans. So uh, we don't expect uh, an easy game 
and uh, and we all know you know Stoke is a very very different team than any of the other teams very very aggressive and uh, you know it makes up for a totally different game it's the time of the season when when clubs start assessing their needs for, for, for next year and there's all sorts of reports and players being linked to to various clubs I mean I'm not expecting any names to be named at this stage but are you, are you drawing up provisional lists and are they dependent on whether you make the Champions League or not no I think you know if you want to move forward um, you have to uh, we have to understand that if we don't make it um, we want to make it in the future so we always have to progress with that in mind uh, I think uh, the the budget uh, uh, might be different because the money that makes it that uh, makes uh, itself available from the, the Champions League is different, but the commitment from the club must be the same. And uh, you know, if you want to to bridge that gap, you have to um, you have to invest, you have to create conditions to be in there the next year. So, uh, uh, in my uh, in my opinion and in my <coughs> perspective, uh, one thing shouldn't shouldn't then won't depend on the, on what is obtained this season. I, w I will mention one name, but he's a current player, Gareth Bale. There's one report that says that uh, he's um, looking to extend his contract because he says the club are doing everything right. Um, now, if, if that was the case, how much of a boost would that be? Yeah, good for him. I think for us, for the season that uh, he has had, he, he deserves. Uh, obviously, we'll put down to bed uh, every single speculation coming out, uh, which we are uh, very, very calm about. And I've, I've told you a couple of weeks ago, but uh, you know it would be um, it would be excellent, and I think a, a reward for what he has achieved this season. And looking ahead to next season, Manchester United without Sir Alex Ferguson will they be uh, just as difficult a, an animal to face, or or might there be a, a, a slightly a bigger chance for the others now? He's I don't know a big big, big time for for Man United, uh, completely different situation. Obviously, they have appointed a, a great manager and uh, and uh, you know a, a person with uh, full of charisma and passion for the game like uh, David Moyes. So I think the appointment is uh, excellent. But the, the transition from uh, a manager that represented so much for that club is uh, is going to be very very sensible. So uh, you know I believe that um, it will be um, it will be a different story. Do you feel though that he'll have to produce the results from from the word go, whereas Sir Alex did get what? Oh, I think a few United years, have, have a different philosophy. I think it, uh, you know, the first thing that uh, comes out is uh, is the length of uh, of David's contract, which is, uh, you know, uh, the type of secureness that uh, and belief that that you need as a manager to work uh, safely and properly. Uh, it will be a year of uh, transition, and uh, and I think uh, you know they will, they will give. Uh, every time possible for, for David to establish his, uh, his ideas and, uh, and what he wants to move forward for the club. And do you expect him to be a success at Old Trafford, knowing, knowing him? Uh, I think so. Uh, I mean, for what he has done in Everton uh, and gaining the conditions that he has now uh, and, uh, and the massive uh, support base that uh, Man United have, you would probably you'd expect him to, um, to win some titles. Warren. Andre, um, <coughs> the fact that the top four finish now is, is out of your hands is, and y it was always in your hands for so long until we've entered May. Is that a source of frustration for you and the squad? Uh, I think we, we had a difficult uh, fixture. I mean, obviously it was in our hands before. We know where uh, all of the teams will make a reflection where they lost uh, uh, points during a season uh, that, could have, uh, that couldn't allow them to be uh, within their objectives. At the moment, we um, you know we still have to focus on on trying to get now. Uh, you know that the Premier League can change uh, in a weekend, so it's not a it's not uh, the time right now to um, to reflect on uh, on what we have done wrong because uh, everything is still a possibility and an opportunity. And uh, at this time, whilst we uh, we are able to do it uh, mathematically, we prefer to focus on uh, on on trying to win the the game against Stoke and then Southern Sunderland. And Manuel Adebayo had a had a good game against Chelsea. Um, source of frustration for some Spurs fans. How have you assessed his season? He's only scored four Premier League goals, but how do you assess his season as, man as his manager? I think uh, different from last season. I mean, the, the team changed uh, dramatically uh, in terms of uh, of, uh, of the personnel, in terms of the the, the style of play. 
So a uh, total different uh, scenario from uh, the one last season. Last season, uh, uh, I think Adebayor had an amazing season, uh, scoring goals. This season, he adapted to uh, to a new function, uh, a new role. Uh, you know, his mobility was excellent for us. The way he, he fed our team, like you just saw the other day, uh, assisting Sigurdsson for the goal. So um, you know, the, the the team is completely different from the one that uh, that we had last year. We were very very pleased. And the number of games that uh, uh, Adebayor played, uh, you know, uh, in the end, represent the importance that he had for the team. Maybe not with the amount of goals that um, he expected, but uh, certainly helping the team to be within the, the frame of our objectives. I'm sure you, as his manager, want more than four Premier League goals. Are you saying that the team last year was more conducive to him scoring goals than, than it is this season? No, no, I'm not saying that. I mean, that the team was different. Uh, you know, uh, some players that uh, played last year were players that uh, had a great uh, season, were great experienced uh, players. Uh, they have left the team as uh, has rebuilt in uh, in some way, and everybody has had to adapt uh, their game to uh, to a new reality. Uh, also, with uh, with the link up that uh, we finished the season between Adebayor and, and Gareth Bale. Uh, and the foe and uh, Adebayor in the beginning of the season. So uh, it has been uh, completely different uh, circumstances to the ones that they had last year with um, with the different players up front and the different setup. And you, you <coughs> face Stoke. Um, you, s you mentioned earlier that they're quite an aggressive side. I think some watchers and some Stoke fans perhaps saying they've not been aggressive enough this season, which is why they've probably been in trouble. Who's that? Some, 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 some people are actually saying that Stoke aren't as aggressive ah. as they were last season. You mentioned they are aggressive, but probably one of the reasons why they've been in trouble this season is they haven't been aggressive enough. Well, I always consider that <laughs> Stoke's team is very, very aggressive and uh, in-your-face style. So uh, I think uh, you know uh, they have the conditions, they have the, the quality of the individuals. Maybe they couldn't score as much points as they wanted. Uh, I think their record last year at home was uh, absolutely impressive. You know, this uh, this season they uh, they couldn't get the the results they wanted, but uh, I think uh, you know in the end uh, survival is what they want, and and they are uh, just uh, just one point from achieving it. Okay, any more questions? No. Okay, we get the cameras off now, please. Thank you.